before we jump into that, I wanted to pick sure. your brain on a couple more uh, supplements that you mentioned yeah, in, in your book yeah. as well around uh, longevity. Uh, we talk about some of these marginal gains that people are looking for. So can you yes. talk a bit about the role of nicotinamide riboside and its potential yeah, I in think, longevity? I, I think this is probably one of the most interesting uh, new fields in uh, longevity science. And you've got uh, Sinclair and some of the docs up in Harvard looking at this. And I think that you know time will tell, but we know from the biochemistry of it that nicotinamide is really important um, – uh, a really important nutrient in the body because it helps you move electrons, right? So if you can move electrons around your body, it helps you build energy. We've got to recycle a lot of that, but you know maybe we can recycle 80, 90% of what we have, but we, we're always on that slow decline. And it always feeds back into our ability to produce ATP. So you need the, the nicotinamide or the NAD to do it. And you can only get it in a few places. You know, if you can't recycle your own, then you've got to make it. And it's hard to make, hard for the body to make. It takes energy to make energy. So a lot of the science now is can you use these nicotinamide, which are essentially vitamin B and, and vitamin B um, uh, analogs, uh, to help you. And I think there's some very fascinating early research that suggests maybe it does. Certainly, I don't think there's any negative to it. Um, it's one of the few um, um, supplements I take, uh, but I, you know, again, I think it's an individual choice. Some people seem to tolerate it very well. Some maybe not as well. Yeah, it's interesting. All the a lot of research coming out, especially animal studies, showing a lot of benefit, and starting to see some things potentially coming out around human trials. So definitely one to keep an eye on there. And I definitely would recommend your your listeners just keep an eye on the research. I don't think it's all there yet but it's very promising uh, i think from uh, from the point of view at least when you look at it through the optics of metabolism 100 percent. and you know you'd mentioned the mitochondria there and i had uh, dr martin Kabbalah on last last year talking hit training and it's definitely something yeah. that you dive into in your book so could you talk a bit of maybe first around just how exercise from a at a cellular level is going to help folks out in terms of this longevity and health span game? Yeah, I think it goes back to a couple of things. Number one, um, it goes it goes to your genetic health, right? So I think again, we always thought our chromosomes were very passive, that they didn't shift. But we now know from very, very good science, if we've gotten better at sequencing DNA and looking at markers, protein markers. We know that exercise immediately changes the configuration of the chromosomes and the kind of proteins you make. It's fascinating, you know, so that we know people that are exercising regularly are having less damage to their DNA. They're repairing it at a better rate, and they also make more mitochondria, you know. So it's one of the few ways that you get mitogenesis in your body. It's almost impossible to do it any other way. So that means more energy, and again making less error, having more energy works towards your benefit in the metabolic uh, life cycle. Yeah, definitely, you know, whether it's building an aerobic base, whether it's kicking things up a notch and getting into those uh, more intense intervals, obviously resistance training, lifting weights, all those things become uh, kind of just a crucial piece of the puzzle in terms of uh, yeah. just, just human health. I mean, I had uh, Dr. Andy Galpin on last year yeah, as well. Yeah, he's brilliant, he, he's, he's, he's great. great. He's you know, yeah, talking he's about great. some of those associations between things like leg strength and VO2 max and even things like grip strength um, and longevity. So that's all yeah, but obviously you know association, but all, all beneficial potential. You know what's fascinating to me is the connection between the brain and the muscle, you know? Definitely. And I, I didn't know this, you know, and here I am, you know, living in, in the world of medicine and sports medicine. And um, there's some amazing research showing like the way the brain will preferentially use the ketones and, and the lactic acid produced during exercise over glucose as an energy source. Fascinating. So up to a third of your lactic acid that you make when you're exercising immediately feeds the brain. So there is this connection um, that I think uh, we're only now appreciating. So just another benefit to, to exercise. You know, listen, there, there's not a more powerful medicine out there. there. You know, I don't care if we're talking stem cells or genetic splicing or 
you know, CRISPR or whatever, you know, if you're exercising daily, that's your best shot at living a longer and healthier life. Great advice, especially for a lot of folks who are struggling to get off, you know, get off the couch, it's hard. unfortunately. It's hard to get off busy the day, yeah, or, you know, work yeah, I mean, doesn't permit listen, kids at home, all that stuff that kind of sucks. Nobody's in interested states. in my journey, you know. I mean, it, 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 listen, life, life is... Uh, Life is all about your tipping points, right? You know, the things you do. We all do things for ourselves. I mean, but, it, you know, the, the one thing that's interesting, it doesn't seem to matter as much what exercise you do, right? Whether it's swimming sure. or jogging or running. I think HIT has advantages, HIT programs, because it's very efficient. You're doing a lot in a small amount of time. So if you're, you know, a professional or anybody, I don't care who you are, whether you're a mom that's trying to, to run the household or your dad running his household, it, you don't have a lot of time, you know, so you got to squeeze it in there. But it's completely worth it, as painful and sweaty as it is. Definitely. I mean, as you mentioned, finding that uh, exercise you can stick to, right? Just a bit like nutrition, where whatever you end up sticking to ends up working. So <laughs> making sure yeah, you enjoy it. Yeah, that's the hardest so key, thing, right? right? Yeah, you got to, it's all got to be sustainable, you know. And I, I think, you know, what I really went, was trying to do in the book was to make an argument, right? An argument that would make sense because it's one thing, like, you know, listen, how many offices, doctors you've been in or you're, you know, physiologists or nutritionists and they say, oh, you should eat less and work out more. Well, that's not good enough. That's not good enough for me. I want to know why, you know, and I want to know why and I want to know how. And then, listen, I once the argument is made, OK, then I'll, I'll put the work in. But I, I hopefully at least in a small way in the, in the book and in the way that I approached it, I gave people enough information where if they really want to take that deep dive, it's there. But if they also just want to have the broad strokes, that's also there. 100%. Yeah, you do a great job actually of parsing through a lot of the details and really digging in and then giving a, you know, a bit of a general synopsis at the end to kind of round things up, which is fantastic. And of course, you know, you mentioned mental health there or the mind connection um, and of course, mental health crucial for healthy aging, which again, you talk about in the book. So what are some of the big rocks for you when it came to, to investigating this sort of mindset, mental health and health span longevity? Well, I, you know, for me, right, I've, I've, I've always been kind of a loner, you know, personally, you know, I mean, those of us who you, know, you, you have to spend a lot of time in science, you spend a lot of time alone. And I guess what I realize is that that's probably the worst thing for my health that I could be doing that, you know, in this world of connectivity, right? There's a balance to be had, right? Now, what are good things, right? We have the internet. You and I are talking, right? Right? That's pretty cool. Where are you right now, by the way? I'm actually, yeah, in the UK, in London, England. So. Right. You're in London. I'm in Nantucket, right? So that connectivity is one of the most important things we can do among ourselves to, to live longer. But it's not just this. We need social cohesiveness. And we haven't been so good at that, right? We kind of trundle people off to, you know, the senior centers or whatever. And we really need to be more integrated culturally. You know, it, it, I think societies that do, and the blue zones are an indication of that, to go back to where we started, that one of the most important I think longevity factors about those people in the blue zones was that they maintained the cohesiveness and integrated nature of the family. The, the grandparents were there. They're part of life. They, you know, there's this affinity between young and old that is very important because you really spike your creativity when you're very young, but also as you get older. The same things we worry about, you know, getting, you know, developing dementia, these, the sort of blurring of lines in the brain also make us amazingly creative. And what do we do? Like we retire. Why the hell are we retiring for? <laughs> Why would you retire? All these years you're studying physiology and all these amazing things you've done and all the people you've talked to. Why would you ever, ever stop doing that? You know? So I think there's a big lesson here that, it's not just to make life better, but it's it's to make it interesting. Because why the hell would you want to live longer if it wasn't going to be interesting and fun? So yeah, it's a, it's it's a great point you make in the book around even uh, you know when you're 20 years old, you're more you know you're going to take more risks. But then that also comes back on itself in the 60s, yeah. 70s, where again you know 
taking yeah. more risk and doing things. So I found that really cool. And of course, as you mentioned, yeah. things like community, a strong sense of purpose. I, I give you, I give you an example. I'm, I, I went, I gave a talk at a, a, a bank, right. Um, and, and, and I'm looking out in the audience and I'm like, how many of you guys are 60 years old? There's like two people that raised, <laughs> you know? And, and so I scolded the president. I said, look, you know, why, you know, why isn't, why isn't there better representation here? Because they all retiring, right? All these people have had dozens and decades and decades of experience in the financial sector wasted when they could be helping and nurturing and mentoring. But we need that. We need that not just to live longer, but we need as a society for our own societal longevity, right? <laughs> right? So I, mean, I think there's, you know, it's funny, and I wrote this book because – I just wanted to live fitter and and I wound up living better because of it. And I, I think I kind of, you know, there was, you write, you do things like, why did I spend, I'm an orthopedic surgeon, why the hell am I writing a book on fitness? And it just became this like exploration, you know, I found so many fascinating things that had, I thought, little to do with longevity and they have everything to do with it. You know, staying connected, you know, talking to that relative that you hate. Maybe you don't hate them so much, you know, be, uh, spending a little more time with your kids, taking a little time to deconnect, you know, to to to, to have meditate, you know, to get in, back in touch with yourself. We're so busy. Right. And but yet being being connected uh, generationally and professionally and in many other ways. Well, do something different, you know, I mean, find something else to do, you know. Yeah, it is interesting how today we're sort of more connected, as you mentioned, sort of via the, the internet and the web, but but folks feel more isolated than ever yeah, before. Yeah, that's and, fascinating. Know. Yeah, it's true. That's a good uh, good insight, I think, the, but it's, it, it's a, we're at this time in history where we can leverage some of this stuff to be better, you know, and again, I, I the goal here isn't not to listen. We all want to have a great workout, you know, have a good meal. But the guy, the idea here is to have a better life, you know, to to be better, to do things, to have a purpose, right? And if you don't know what it is, you're struggling out there. You know, what do I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't want to do this. You know what? You don't have to save everybody's life. You just have to start with one.